just how dangerous is Germany and what kind of things do you need to protect yourself from when you're here? Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. As many of us know from our own travels abroad, often when you go into an unknown environment thousands of kilometers or miles away from home, you can be a little uneasy because of the unknown and you may not know what unknowns you may really need to know more about. You may hear rumors about what it's like outside of the comfortable confines of your own country's borders, or you may fall victim to stereotypes you hear through the grapevine of what it's like in another country like Germany. So just how dangerous is Germany really? After four years of living here ourselves, we thought we'd share a few things you need to look out for when you travel to Germany or move here for the first time. And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about today in my video. Things you better know before you go or else you might end up with a problem or zwo. One thing I've talked about a lot in our videos is the culture shock of seeing Germans buying crates and crates full of water bottles from the grocery store to drink at home. Besides all the bottles foreigners in Germany sees Germans buying rather than just drinking the tap water at home, there's also the fact that there are very, very few public drinking fountains anywhere in Germany, and instead, fountains all over the place with signs telling you not to drink the water. Plus, in the case of at least Americans traveling to Germany who are used to getting free unlimited tap water in American restaurants, they usually can't get free tap water from restaurants in Germany, but rather are served, yet again, bottled water. So with all of these, what seems to be warning signs against the German tap water, they start to think there must be some reason why I can't get tap water and Germans don't seem to drink tap water. Maybe the water isn't safe to drink here? So can you safely drink tap water in Germany? Oh no, this water is totally safe to drink. All that was just because I realized some of you are making your life way too complicated with the insurance companies you're using in Germany because you aren't using Feather Insurance to sponsor today's video. Moving to a new country can be overwhelming and you have lots of questions to ask, like how and what kind of insurance do I get here? Feather's mission is to make insurance in Germany simple and transparent, especially for expats because they offer their services in English so you can avoid words like this. Feather offers a wide range of insurance policies, and if you want to go full German when you move to Germany and have six or more policies, it is incredibly easy to manage because you get all of your insurances under one account. Here's the quick and dirty on what you need to know about water in Germany. Rather than a difference in safety of drinking water, you're actually noticing a difference in preference of water between Germany and the US. Germany is the king when it comes to drinking carbonated water, and in fact, 78% of bottled water consumption in Germany comes from drinking carbonated water. So when you see Germans buying huge crates of bottled water, they are doing it primarily just to get the bubbly stuff, not avoiding dangerous tap water. And no, you can't typically get free tap water in restaurants, but that's not because it isn't safe. German restaurants simply make most of their profits on drinks, so they don't just hand out free water, generally speaking. Sometimes they'll be nice and give you some if you ask, but they aren't required by law to do so, and it isn't customary to do so. Even with all of that, data shows that 83% of Germans drink tap water regularly or occasionally. Just a lot of the time, they will have a water carbonator machine at home to carbonate that tap water before they drink it. In terms of the lack of drinking fountains, this is actually something that the German government has identified as a problem, especially as Germany sees hotter and hotter summers. Since as of last year, there is roughly only one water fountain for every 275 square kilometers in Germany, the German federal cabinet signed off a draft amendment to the Water Resources Act that would make the provision of tap water via public fountains part of the standard water supply for which public authorities are responsible. So here's the straight facts. German tap water is the most safe and controlled beverage or food product in Germany and tastes so good that in multiple blind taste tests, tap water actually tops or equals mineral waters. And if we look at the 2022 world ranking of water quality, Germany ranks eighth in the world and the US ranks 26th. When we have family visiting from the States, I pick them up from the airport and drive them about an hour back to our place. 
A vast majority of this drive is on the world famous German Autobahn, a stretch of road that our foreign family and friends ride on with both trepidation and excitement. Foreigners hear of the famous fact that the Autobahn has no speed limit and can't wait to see it in action or drive on it to see if they can brave topping out speeds that they could never legally get away with in their home country. However, we also hear a lot of concern with how incredibly dangerous this must be and how scared some foreigners are to ever merge onto the Autobahn for fear of a driving experience that could match Formula One or NASCAR. I mean, how on earth could you not possibly be putting your life in great peril if cars are whizzing by all around you at unimaginable speeds? Or even beyond that, foreigners come to Germany and are shocked at how all Germans have an unusual fondness for rules and adhering to them, but then let it all fly out the window when they take off on the Autobahn where it seems like there are no rules. To further that, they might even catch wind that there actually is some talk politically to put a speed limit on the Autobahn, reinforcing the idea that it is dangerous to not have a speed limit, and even the Germans who have this no speed limit policy think so as well. Well, first, a majority of the Autobahn doesn't have speed limits, but not the entire thing. There are parts that do have a speed limit. And two, the debate about putting a speed limit on the Autobahn actually is primarily due to environmental reasons as the argument is that a speed limit would reduce CO2 and hydrocarbon emissions by 9% and nitrogen oxides by 6%. There are some that argue about putting a speed limit for safety reasons, but most of it is in the environmental argument realm. In fact, if you look at countries with speed limits in place, there are quite a few who still have higher deaths per month rates on highways than Germany, including the US. So technically, you are supposed to be safer driving on German highways than American highways. Oh, and also the reality is that you'll sit in either traffic or construction zones on most of the Autobahn anyways in Germany, so you won't actually be moving fast enough for something bad to happen. But how can you actually be safer driving in Germany even though there isn't a speed limit on most of the Autobahn? Well, for one, while you're sitting in traffic in one of Germany's notorious thousands and thousands of construction zones, just check out how amazing the road conditions are. The Autobahn is extremely well engineered and maintained, making the road itself very safe. Also, Germans have to pay upwards of $2,000 for driving school and it can take up to six months to get your license, making German drivers extremely good and serious drivers. Germany has strict car safety standards and cars must undergo strict inspections regularly to be roadworthy, and on top of all of that, there is a theory that when you have a speed limit, it actually might create a false safety net. For example, if you don't see someone coming up behind you on a highway, you go and change lanes, you assume there still is no car behind you because cars are following the speed limit, but someone might be speeding and they hit you because you assumed nobody was there. Whereas with no speed limit, you are constantly alert and checking for cars because you never know when a car will come flying up at 250 kilometers an hour making drivers and theory, significantly safer and attentive rather than rely on a false safety net of a speed limit. All that to say, if you're coming to drive in Germany for the first time, the Autobahn is generally very safe, but you might be the most unsafe thing on it if you are driving it for the first time. So please be very careful and brush up on your German road safety rules before attempting to drive on the Autobahn. <laughs> When Americans are dreaming up their dream trip to Europe, they often are making plans to visit Paris, Rome, London, or other major romantic European cities. But a few things they will be warned of by other US travelers who have been to those places. Oh, watch out for scams. You better watch out for pickpockets. There will be these men that will try to tie bracelets onto your wrists but don't let them tie those bracelets onto your wrists. Gotta watch out for bag snatchers. Don't sign any pledges to donate money to a random monk on the street. Be sure to watch those taxi meters. Don't ever pay for restrooms. Well, actually that last one just feels like scams to Americans who are used to free bathrooms, but isn't actually a scam. So what about in Germany? What do you actually have to be worried about? Well, I don't wanna say Nothing, because Germany isn't a fairy tale land where nothing bad happens, but you generally don't have to worry about most of this stuff in German cities like you do in other large cities around the world, including large American cities, of course. In fact, I made a video two years ago about things that feel like scams to Americans coming to Germany for the first time based on cultural differences, but aren't 
actually scams, like paying for public restrooms. And in that video, I explained that generally some things may feel like scams, but there really aren't too many things that are actually scams in Germany. I think a big part of this is due to the fact that Germans are such great rule followers and in general are a self-policing society that looks out for each other. If Germans see something being done wrong, they will not be shy about making it known rather than minding their own business. And actually, if something sketchy happens, it is common to hear a hello on the street or on a train as a German tries to get the party involved attention to stop the shenanigans. But again, Germany isn't a fairy tale land. Of course, like in most places in the world, you should be aware of petty crime, like maybe pickpockets, maybe the odd scam here and there, or even technically illegal things, but are just ways of taking advantage of tourists. For example, with ATMs, you might want to be aware of exchange rates because some ATMs will give you horrible exchange rates to unsuspecting tourists. Not really a scam and is technically legal, but kind of crummy to do to someone that isn't aware of what's going on. Or, for example, be aware of where your phone is at all times. We had a friend who just recently had her phone stolen and wasn't even in a major city or tourist trap area, just in a local mall and it happened. Or if you're moving to Germany, a major source of headaches can be bike theft. And in fact, around 600,000 bicycles are stolen from their owners every year in Germany. But there are things you can do to protect yourself. For example, in the US, I used to always carry my wallet in my back pocket. Now, since we travel so often, I just have gotten used to carrying my cash and cards in my front pocket of my pants. Or if we are going to a new country, we order currency for free from our bank rather than using ATMs in that destination. Or like on the bike theft theme, you can get a great bike insurance policy with Feather Insurance to give you a peace of mind in the case that your bike is stolen or even damaged. They've created a website, contract, support, and claims all done in English, making it super simple to use them for expats. Besides that, it's all 100% done online. But overall, I generally do feel safer in Germany than in the US in many cases, and there are definitely other major cities in Europe that I would warn you about before I would ever warn you about crime or scams in German cities. Again, generally speaking. So here's a big question I have for you. If Germany is so safe, and with this video I have made you feel like you have next to nothing to worry about in Germany, then why are Germans so obsessed with insurance and insuring everything? In my last video, you may have seen me talking about what a culture shock it was for us as Americans to move to Germany and see and hear about insurance in Germany that nearly all Germans have that we had never seen or heard of. It is also a shock to hear some Germans explain to us how they have 10 plus different types of insurances when we had maybe three or four in the US. I mean, if Germany is so safe, then why do roughly 50% of Germans have legal insurance? Well, for one, there is a general theme built into German culture surrounding the love for rules, stability, and risk aversion. It is kind of built in the DNA of Germans as they actually have the oldest public health insurance system in the world. 85% of Germans have Haftpflichtversicherung, which is personal liability insurance. In a way, it's kind of circular when I think about it, because since 85% of Germans have this insurance, they expect you would also have it, thus creating a need for it. For example, say if you accidentally did something to damage some sort of property belonging to a German, they are not going to think twice about holding you accountable for replacement or repairs because they assume everybody has Haft which will definitely put you in an awkward spot financially if you don't have it. Therefore, because there is this culture of you will be held responsible because everybody has personal liability insurance, everybody has personal liability insurance. Another reason? It's super cheap in Germany, like the Haftpflichtversicherung. Because so many people buy into these policies in Germany, the outcome is extremely affordable insurance. So in a way, you end up with a, well, if it's just paying the equivalent of a coffee or two a month to have peace of mind, I might as well. And that legal coverage I mentioned, nearly 50% of Germans have? Yeah, that's not necessarily because of crime per se, but because the risk of being sued in Germany is so high. Germany is in fact the number one most litigious country in the world. So do Germans have insurance because Germany is 
dangerous? Well, not necessarily. But if you do move to Germany, it definitely is important to get your coverage taken care of. And again, Feather Insurance is a great place to start. I mean, they have a 4.9 star rating on Trustpilot after all. And rather than hiring salespeople pushing policies on you that you don't need, Feather has professional expert consultants who can help simply guide you through this normally overwhelming process. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is... Do you put dishes directly in the dishwasher after use or let them soak in the sink first? Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you in my next video. Here through the grapevine of what it's like in another... Another... I have a lot of sores in my mouth this week, so it's kind of hard to talk. Especially as Germany sees hotter and hotter summers. I'm saying that in July and wearing a sweater though. Since as of last year, there is roughly